Good morning to all of you, um, students of the fourth year. As you know, the news uh, recently coming up that there won't be um, on-campus classes. It's it's an important thing. I think it's an important step because it protects people from the um, SARS-CoV-2 um, infection, which is I'm pretty sure um, is getting serious nowadays. With regards to the, to the lesson I have today is about Miranda warning. Now, this in law, in law, we have two types of warnings when a crime is has occurred. If, if a crime occurs, we have two types of warnings. The first warning is known as uh, it's not really a warning; it's more of a right. Your rights as a witness, in case something happens, your rights as a witness are read to you. The second warning is the Miranda warning. The Miranda warning, which we don't have in Iraqi Kurdistan, unfortunately, in case someone is um, caught by the police. And with regards to this Miranda warning, um, the thing is you need to understand if you are read your rights or you are read the Miranda warnings, it means that's it. You are not a potential suspect but you are an actual suspect. You become a suspect in this case. When, <coughs> I'm sorry about that. Who knows, it could be Corona, but I hope it's not Corona. <laughs> um, so when you, you, when you read your Miranda warnings, you are immediately a suspect. It means you are under arrest. You will be arrested in this case. So Miranda warning, since we don't have the word Miranda in Kurdish, Miranda warning, but we can translate it to Hashiorbuno um, okay? guman lekirni. In other words, you are a person who is suspected and you are under arrest. Right? So when this happens, you are read these rights. The first right says you have the right to remain silent. You have the right to remain silent. It means... Um, if we question you, since this is an investigation, if we ask you a question, you have the right to remain silent. You have the right to answer none of the questions that we direct at you or we direct um, at you. Yes, any question we, we, we ask you, you have the right to say, you don't have the right to remain silent. I'm not going to answer any of your questions. The second one is anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. So let's say they're investigating you and... You know, you, you're asked questions and you start divulging inf information. You start saying information. These information that you say, that you say, can be used against you, testified by the investigators against you in the court. Okay, so one is connected to the previous one. So you should be very careful in not saying anything, you know, once you are... Um, investigate because it could be used against you. Three, you have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you are being questioned. This is known as legal counseling. Legal counseling. If you're investigated, if you're investigated, or if you're a radio rights of um, Miranda warnings, I mean, uh, you have the right to say. I need to stop with the investigation. I need to call. I need to call a lawyer. If you call a lawyer, the lawyer will tell you this is called legal counseling. I'm not going to translate anything because I need you to translate this. Um, the lawyer will. Call, you, you can call the lawyer, and the lawyer will tell you, "Do not talk to the investigators unless I'm there," or you can tell them, "I'm not going to divulge any information." This. Point number three has not mentioned that the person who is being investigated has the right to call a lawyer free of charge. The, the country, the state, will provide a lawyer for this person free of charge. If you cannot afford a lawyer, hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish. And this is in case you don't have money. As I said earlier, just like as I said a while ago, a second, a second ago, I said if you don't have a lawyer, they will provide you a lawyer free of charge. The government will provide you a lawyer. The next one is you cannot decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any question or make any statements. Sorry, you can decide. Sorry, you can decide. As I said, one of the crucial points about investigation is 
um, everything is given, uh, the, the one who is arrested, is been given the right to remain silent and not to divulge any information because um, upon divulging any sort of information, the person, the person is then, um, as I said, everything can be used against the person in court. So, um, as it says here, you cannot, you can decide any time to exercise these, these rights and not to answer any of the questions or make any statements. You will have investigations of more than hours and hours and hours, of, of, of hours and hours. Then you have the suspect, or in this case, the one who's arrested, not speaking a single word, okay? That's because he's practicing his right of remaining silent and not to answer any of the, que of, of the questions. Below it says waiver, the cancellation. We've talked about it in the, class, in, in the classroom. Do you understand each of these rights I have explained to you? The person, you know, says that, you know, the investigator says that to the person who was arrested. Having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us now? And that's when the investigation begins, okay? That's when the investigation begins. If the suspect or the, the one who's arrested says no, the investigators begin using certain um, investigative methods to try to divulge information uh, or elicit information from um, the suspect or the arrested person, the one who's arrested or the arrested. So this is the waiver. So upon saying, having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us now? The suspect or the one who's arrested, even if, it's, if, if the person is falsely arrested, they could say no, and then that's the end of the investigation. Or they could say yes, Let's talk about this thing, or why I'm, why I am um, um, arrested, why I'm being arrested for, what I'm being arrested for. All these questions could be addressed then by the investigators, um, and then maybe um, the person will either uh, either be arrested, or maybe will be given some sort of um, arrest with the possibility of parole. It means a police officer will be around the person's house until the time of um, what do you call it? Until the time of um, the trial. If the person is then falsely accused, they will be exonerated. If they were not falsely accused, and it's true that the person is accused of something and is actually um, convicted of this crime that um, the person is being uh, investigated for, this in this case, what happens, the person will go to jail. What I need you to do for this week is to translate the Miranda warning in, in Kurdish since we don't have it. Um, investigation roles in Kurdistan region, um, I think, do not have any sort of the role of reading the Miranda warning because you don't have this thing here. It's important to introduce this, so it'll be a good thing for you to translate this um, document. Most of the investigators, I would say, if, if not all of them, memorize the Mar Miranda warning because they read it to um, the suspects or the uh, arrested. Uh, not, maybe it's, I'm exaggerating, I'm not saying most of them, maybe some of them just read from uh, something like this. Okay, I wish you uh, a good time, and I also wish you that, um, I wish that you are protected from SARS-CoV-19. Have a very good day, take care.